All right, so today we're going to look at putting some 32 inch uh, tires on the uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee. So this is uh, a 2008. This one in particular has a couple of things going for it to do this job. It's got a two inch lift on the front and the back and it has uh, inch and a half spacers on it. So these the stock wheels are about 29 inches on the outside diameter. And uh, there's a few things you need to worry about. So on the front, if you put bigger wheels on, sometimes they'll interfere with this uh, bolt here. So we'll take a look at that when we get things put together. Some people have to trim them off. I think there's a couple different styles, like this one. I might have an inside hex on it, I'm not too sure. And uh, there's a pinch weld right here. So basically you might have to remove the inner wheel well and uh, cave in that pinch weld with your hammer because it's like a, just a piece of metal that sticks out when they assemble the vehicle so you can fold it over and then use a heat gun to reform this area here and in some vehicles depending on the wheel you choose the uh, wheel might rub on the uh, caliper bracket but again that depends on the uh, wheel combination in the different years, the earlier year Jeep Grand Cherokees don't have that problem. So I uh, guess we'll get the vehicle jacked up and we'll get uh, the wheels out of the Jeep here. So you can just barely fit the five of them in here. They're stuck up against the ceiling. I do have uh, like a package tray I've built so I can slide things in here. So I'm, this is probably raised up three inches or so. But uh, getting all five of them in here is a bit of a chore and yes, yes you need all five wheels because uh, this is being an all-time four-wheel drive your spare tire has to match whatever you've got for uh, your wheels and you got to do all four tires at the same time you can't drive with the uh, two front ones changed and two back ones changed or something like that and then if you have the factory tow package in order to stow this tire underneath, you'll have to take the uh, bumper cover off. I don't know if you can see with the light here or not, but uh, you see how these bolts are sticking through. What you need to do is uh, take the bumper cover off, take the bolts out from the back, and then these nuts are kind of loosely welded to this plate here. So you'll put a socket on here and snap them off and then take the bolts and turn them around and put them back in so that the heads are on this side instead of having the uh, open threads sticking into the uh, tire carrier cavity. And then we gotta see if this will fit through the spare tire center. It doesn't look like it's uh, removable. That might actually be a bit of a chore to fit that through. So uh, I'm not sure, that's not going to be in this video, but it's something to, to keep in mind. I might have to cut a slot in this or something so I can remove this plate so I can slide it through. Because it's got to uh, grab onto through here. So these, you can just pop these out. So I guess uh, we'll get the tires out, pump them up to pressure. And uh, I think... I'm, May or may not have mentioned it. So these are new takeoffs from a 2018 Jeep Grand Cherokee. It's 2021 currently. So they've been sitting brand new somewhere. They all have the nubs on them still. So if you're going to be buying wheels like this, check the date code on them and looking for cracks in the tires. And then I noticed that at least one of these tires had been broken open at some point and they've all got kind of different wheel weights on them. So I have a sneaking suspicion that someone stole all the tire pressure monitors out of them. But uh, it's still, it works out pretty good. So up to 2018, Jeep used the same bolt pattern on these with the same bolt hole size, so being half inch. Whereas uh, 2019 plus on the JLs, they have a 14 millimeter hole. So it, there's a possibility you can bottom out your uh, lug nuts before you get the wheel tight. So people have used them, but I chose to go with the 2018 wheels and avoid that issue. Then the JK and the JLs have different backspacing than each other. 
and they have different back spacing than the Jeep Grand Cherokee. So I think you need at least a one inch spacer on this vehicle to uh, get the, to uh, avoid rubbing on the uh, rotors on the front. So being this is a stock wheel currently with an inch and a half spacer and you can see it's just peeking out at the top and then on the, the front as well similarly. So what we'll do now, like I said, is get the uh, tires pumped up and we'll start putting them on. I'm going to probably give an update of my uh, leaking fuel injector. So it's been like that for all winter now. And you can see that it's turning the uh, top of the head black. And it's uh, got the black fuel all over the place. You can get that to focus or not. So it smells. I think people look I try to avoid falling behind me because they get really smells when I'm driving. I noticed when I was putting the, the air in these wheels, like I said, you can take out the center caps. They're just pushed in right here. So uh, I noticed you got the offset right here is 44.45. It's got the size 18 by uh, seven and a half. The real uh, Mopar wheels are not uh, replicas. Not that it really matters in my opinion. But anyway, just to show you what you can see and they're in nice condition versus uh, these wheels which are a number of years old now I started using them in the uh, winter I got stuck this winter and I was just trying to get out I tore up the wheel so uh, anyway that's why I decided to give up on using these as uh, summer wheels and steel wheels were looking pretty bad so uh, now we'll take the wheel off here and see how it fits so let's take this wheel off now. If you don't have an impact gun, you should uh, really look at buying one. This is a three quarter inch drive. Makes life a lot easier. Take a look uh, inside of this wheel. See what we can discover. Looks like it has some similar markings on it. 17 by seven and a half. May not say the offset on it, but you can see the uh, center piece is removable on this as well. So actually the offset is there, it's 50.8, 50 50.8. So uh, see, the wheel will fit on initially because uh, we're up in the air right now. There's the uh, same inner hub spacing as well. So it remains hub centric. Normally you clean the face of the wheel spacer before putting on the wheel.
you can see it's pretty close. I think uh, we turn the wheel and put it down, we might have an issue. But I'm on a bit of a hill, so I don't want to uh, do that while well, it's up in the air, so I'll put it down first. All right, we got the uh, wheel on, it's uh, torqued on, and it is just touching the uh, plastic. I don't know if you can tell or not, but when I move it back, it stops touching. And if we rock the vehicle back and forth, you can see that as it travels through the motion, it's gonna continue hitting that. So, probably have to do something about it but I'm gonna give it a try as is. And then the other thing I wanna show you was the, uh, the lug nuts. This is with the uh, half inch lug nuts. And they're like just touching the cups. They're almost disappearing into them. So if you had the uh, 14 millimeter lugs uh, with the half inch nuts that you'd need to use, that would become a problem. You'd probably wanna use wheel adapters so that these don't like disappear into the uh, wheel. These are aftermarket uh, lugs, but I see that, that being a problem with anything that you use. So uh, I'll hurry up and put on the rest of the wheels, and then uh, we'll try to take it for a drive and see how it goes. So I'll put the wheels up uh, beside each other so you can see the difference in uh, size as well. So like I said, it's about a, a three inch difference in height. They're pushed up against each other at the bottom there. So that's a pretty realistic uh, difference. All right, I thought I'd show you the profile of the uh, old rear tire versus the new front tire. So the uh, new tire is maybe a bit more bulbous, kind of rounds out a bit more. But I think the tread is probably about the same amount underneath of the wheel. And when you're driving straight you have tons of, tons of space for the pinch weld. It's only when you're turning and hitting a bump that it's uh, a real concern with the size tire. The speedometer is going to be off by quite a bit obviously because uh, I think it's like a 7% difference in uh, wheel diameter for revolutions per mile. And then if you have a lift on one of these and you don't change your uh, links, you'll find that the lift brings the rear wheel forward closer to the uh, back door. So that link that you see crossing through here, you need to get adjustable ones and uh, stretch it out backward to put the wheel back in the middle. And if you want to go more than two inches up, you're going to have a problem with your drive shaft hitting the uh, fuel tank so the uh, crossbar I don't know if we can see that or not I'm just trying to spot it right there see that square past the tire that part there you need to get an adjustable one of those so that you can uh, put your axle back in the middle because it will uh, get sucked in on this side and stick out further on this side. It's probably only a half an inch, but it uh, it's enough to be a, a problem. So uh, I guess we'll get this wheel on. And I'll mention that it's not good that I'm working on a hill. I have to be careful make sure I'm not in front of the vehicle. Because what can happen is uh, when you lift an all-wheel drive vehicle off the ground, you definitely need your parking brakes on. And if any one of the wheels spins it'll roll away. It's a bit different than in a front wheel or rear wheel drive vehicle. So uh, just watch out for that. So we'll just uh, get this lifted up and uh, toss that wheel on. It's just a little bit different on the back compared to the front. Now I'm seeing to be up an extra inch and a half to get that wheel on.
And if your socket is kind of jiggling because you have an adapter, you just put your hand on it and it'll uh, take the slack off and make it work. So the last thing to mention is the uh, tire pressure monitors. So the early vehicles pre-facelift like two, four, 2005 and six, maybe seven, they will not work with the uh, JK TPMS at a different frequency. But I think with the 2008 or maybe eight and a half and newer, it will work. But if you're buying old wheels, you should probably anticipate spending money on a, the TPMS anyway. So let me get this to get on there. Fit nicely. I've done uh, some videos on how to mount wheels properly, so uh, I'm not giving you the full explanation on how to do that. Prefer if you watch the other videos to see how to do that, because there's a fair amount to it, and you do want to get it right. And don't start your lug nuts using your impact gun. You can do it if you're good, but if you're bad, you'll ruin the studs, so it's not worth it. Just take a look where we're at. You can see that it's uh, three fingers here, more like four or five fingers here. I've got wheel guards there, or mud guards that are to kind of skew how much off it is, but it's off by quite a bit. So let's put that down. Is the new Jeep. Take a look. So it's poking out pretty much the same. So with the wheel spacers and the difference in offset, it all kind of works out for the most part. I had mud guards all around the vehicle, but I lost one when I drove the vehicle into the ditch. You'll get a little bit of mud on your uh, door handles, but that's uh, about it. It's not too bad with the big wheels. But what was bugging me was I could hear rocks hitting the vehicle, that's why I put the guards on. So I'll get this one tightened up and then we'll do the last one then we'll go for a drive. All right, we've got all the tires on now. I guess I wasn't specific on the uh, model of tire I've got. So as you can see, it's a Bridgestone, Bridgestone uh, Dueler AT and the size is uh, P25570R18. It's a mud and snow tire, which is basically a summer tire in Canada. They aren't any good to use in the winter. And uh, if you can see the date, it's 0518. And lastly, something you want to look at is the weight rating, which will be near the pressure. So it is uh, 24 something, 2460 or something, a 44 PSI. And uh, this Grand Cherokee calls for like an XL tire. So it needs like a bit heavier weight rating. And when we look at this one, this is a 3920 date code uh, Avalanche 245R17 mud and snow, but it has a snowflake on it, which makes it usable in Canada. And the weight rating on it is like 2140. So when you go to the 18 inch wheel, it's just a, a better wheel overall for weight. So I don't need to worry about when I'm towing a trailer, I'm not gonna kill my tires. So, as you can see, got them on, 
all the way around. I'm just going to grab my wallet and my phone, go for a drive, and see if we can get out of the driveway without uh, rubbing on these wheels. Well, got out of the driveway. kids around today. Gotta watch out for them. No TPMS problems yet. Sometimes it takes up to 50 kilometers, like probably 30 something miles for them to come in. Wheel. Pretty mushy tires still, even though they're three years old, they're very soft. Good sign so far. motorcycle riders out today too. So that's good, I'll be able to drive to work. So I guess we'll go find a place to go do some figure eights and see if we can cause any trouble. So I got the speedometer set to exactly 100 kilometers an hour and uh, my GPS I'm reading 105 so I'm now 5% over on my uh, speedo but that's sort of uh, expected because with the tires I had before it was probably 5 the opposite so I've changed by about 10 kilometers an hour so uh, I checked my uh, lugs made sure they weren't coming loose I didn't show that part but uh, Definitely have to check that a couple of times when you put on new wheels. Everything's good, they're not rubbing. I checked after taking a few corners. So, uh, so far, things are looking pretty good. All right, so I did the whole trip. I, so normally I back into my driveway here. So I pulled in towards that driveway and cut the wheel hard. And as I was backing up, you can see that this uh, wheel here caught onto the pinch weld. So it didn't do any damage to the tire. Just left a mark and made a bit of noise. It did pull some of the uh, plastic off of this uh, cover. So uh, I'll have to take this wheel off on both sides, so the front wheels, and uh, punt or squish down that pinch weld a little bit and massage things. But I probably only got like a half an inch problem interference, so I can uh, work with that. So I'd say these tires are about uh, the limit, unless you want to get really aggressive with the uh, pinch weld. So hope you found this useful. Thank you for watching.